expressing the truth about the church and this world we live in. Welcome to Real Talk Ministry Podcast. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Minister Nisi of Real Talk Ministry, and I just want to thank God for everything He has been doing for my life and your life. I know He's doing some great things for you, even though it may seem hard, you may think you're struggling, or you may be in a real good place right now. So we just want to thank God for everything. And that's what this podcast is called, Everything, because so much is going on. I said I'm not going to be the person who just capitalizes on things as I hear them. And I'm not. I like to have other discussions and not just always be uh, speaking on the topic of the day or the hour or the week or the month. But I will start off by saying as Christians, we got to understand that our Lord and Savior told us that we cannot even, uh, we have to pray for our enemies. And we can't do evil to them even when they do the worst to us. And as Christians, when we see other Christians and hear other Christians have a difference of opinion, point of view, you can address things and um, be led of God to ask him how to handle the situation. But we can't keep calling each other fools and and, and we can't just keep dogging each other because we don't agree. That's not the light I don't believe God wants us to have. And then when I say dog each other, I don't mean correction. I just mean like, I know it's heated. You may feel upset because honestly, when Christians get out here and make mistakes about things and say things, they shouldn't. They do without thinking. You know, they they say what they want to say. We don't have control of their tongue. But they do it without thinking, I will say. And what I'm talking about is Ty Tribute. Yes, I heard the entire video. I didn't just see little shorts. I listened to the entire video and he knew, he knew that the church was going to get at him for saying that it was whack. My thing is, Ty Ty Trivet talked out of frustration of the church. And unless you are really a part of the church itself, you really would understand. Like I was born and raised in the church and I am tired of the system. I ain't gonna lie, I get tired of... uh, going to church knowing that you gotta come in do a prayer sing a song sing a fast song sing a slow song and then raise the offering i'm i get tired of the routine of it too i get tired of it and i know many people gonna say well you go to the routine on your job church is not my job i may be able to get a praise in and talk to the lord and say a prayer while i'm there but the connection that i have and the freedom to be able to connect to God is not the same as it is at my job so let's not try to compare church to everything else that's something else we need to stop doing as Christians too just because people do things outside of the church doesn't mean that they should that's a reason why they should be doing it for church but that's that's a little bit of the everything I will talk about a little later but as far as Todd Tribbett I didn't agree with a lot of things he said and how he said it because he was really talking out of frustration of church if you listen to what he said he basically said you know he's trying to find a church himself so uh, things is just not in a happy place for him and he spoke of that and I think that was the wrong platform to speak of that Um, I don't think any platform was a platform for him to speak his frustration he could speak his truth and he could speak his opinion at any time but when you're frustrated sometimes you say things how you feel it don't come across right i do want to point out some of the positives that people are not talking about but some of the positive that i enjoyed of the video was that you know Char- no Charlemagne, he needs to be educated i'm sorry Charlemagne needs a little more bible study uh but uh i love how jess and um dj envy were sharing their stories about how they go to church and how they connect with god you know dj envy i know a lot of people may have felt what he felt how he had to get up and go to church and that was just something that he didn't want for his family and thank god for the internet he was able to still stay in communication with the lord and that's what was important without that throughout that interview that even though they are not um to the full capacity of christian life as many of us are and are not you know i'm not judging but they still wanted to keep a connection with god despite what they may be going through in their lives now and what they may have experienced as a childhood like i said dj if he didn't like the way he had to go to church and he didn't want that with his family so thanks to 
thanks to the internet, he could still hear the word from the Lord, and that's a blessing. And then on the flip side, you have Jess, who is like, I go to church, I get pra- God praise, I dance, I shout, you know. And you know, my kids were baptized. My her first kids were a uh, child was baptized there. She, you know, she's the person who goes to church and she enjoys it and she loves it. So it was good to hear that kind of content coming from people who you know on a day to day basis don't really get to talk about the Lord in church in that way. So it wasn't completely or horrendously negative just because Ty Tribute said the church was church system. Now let's get it right. He said the system was whack. He did not say church was whack. Um, but he said the system is whack. My only downfall to him saying that is he never said how to make the system better. He never even said the Lord is working on him to bring about a change for his church and he hoped he could share it with someone else. So the content and how he said it definitely would put anyone in a position who felt like man i really want to go to church or go back to church but i'm struggling and i'm fighting but i really want to go and then he comes and said the system is whack it could easily give satan time to a chance to manipulate that person and that's why i said we have to be careful how to speak not to speak out of frustration i do that too and i have done that in the past and now i try to go before the lord even more than when i started um years ago with especially with my podcast when I first started with my podcast I try to go before the Lord and ask him to help me to say what I want to say truthfully and how I want to say it and how I want to feel but I don't want to come out as a frustrated rant and when he did that he knew the church was going to be upset but he never clarified himself I will say to keep Charlemagne to God no I take that back because he's no nobody God but I will say keep Charlemagne in prayer because it seems like he was calling out all these people who he go to church he has time to have conversations with but he still don't understand Christ to me and that is no judgment it's just from how he speak God said in this word you could tell by the fruit they by the fruit it bears and some of the stuff he was saying even like when he was saying that God doesn't dwell in the church and Ty Tribute was like, yeah, why don't nobody preach about that? Because he said it wrong. That's why nobody's preaching about that. Because that's not what God meant. In Acts, I believe it was the 17th chapter, God was letting them know, like, I am God. Like, I'm not going to stoop to your level. And I am the creator. What you make with your hands, you can't summon me to be something of you. I am the it, the it, the all of it. Like, that was my interpretation it wasn't like um he was trying to say that the people who come to the church building would the bible clearly says if two or three come together see he is in the midst and i know that does not mean you have to be in church for him to be in the midst but he also said fail not to fellowship so in those scriptures and i'm sorry i will list in the details um on youtube and my podcast that you're hearing me on i will list those scriptures so he didn't mean it in the way it came across so i felt that was wrong and i felt that Charlemagne, you know when they was talking about the holy spirit and going to church and he was like he's too grown for the holy ghost and i don't think that was a time for todd tribute to correct him uh some things you could just correct off-site you don't have to be to prove to other christians that you're a christian so I'm going to correct it this way and get them told right now. I, I don't believe in that either. But I do believe he needs to have a heart-to-heart talk with someone who is willing to teach him the ways of the Lord. Um, even They made a joke about him. Like, you know, they even made a joke about um, him saying, you too grown for the Holy Ghost. And he was like, yeah, he gave his reason for why, but that wasn't, that's no excuse. So it seems like to me, he is trying to learn. Uh, he may have an understanding and just haven't accepted it yet, but he definitely need to sit down and talk to someone so he can get a better understanding so he can go on the right path. And even if it takes him a little while to get to that path, at least someone talk to him about it and he can be able to ask questions if he don't understand. A lot of things Charlemagne was saying, uh, Ty Tribbett shouldn't agree with so quickly. Or have the understanding to say, yeah, you're right. 
Um, one thing that I will say, and this will be my final thing about that tie tribute thing, is that one thing I didn't like was the justification they was trying to do against DJ Envy, saying that he don't think it's appropriate. And I'm not saying word from word verbatim, but he didn't think it's a pro- he doesn't think it's appropriate for someone who is a sinner. Basically, this is how I took it. Um, basically someone who's not living right and not doing right to go try to tell somebody they need to live right and do right. And the first thing Charlemagne said was, well, the disciples did. And Ty Tribble was like, yeah, what about the disciples? I don't know. I don't agree with that. And I was like, hold up. The disciples walked with Jesus. The disciples were learning of him when he was with them. And I never read where, aside from Judah Iskar, who betrayed Jesus, I never read where someone was just one of his disciples that was with him decided to, like, not live for Christ while, you know, not be a representation of him. Like I said, aside from Judas, who betrayed him, which he called him out on that. Jesus did. But it wasn't like they was walking around not trying to live the life of Christ, even in his presence. And tried to minister. God, what Jesus wasn't having that. <laughs> Jesus wasn't having that. And then I was like, the disciples were with Jesus, and He made it clear that as long as they were with Him, there are certain things they don't have to do. But when He leaves, He's going to send them a Comforter, and they are going to have to fast and pray. And He even told them when they try to cast out the devil, these things come by fasting and praying. And so it's like you can't say that the disciples. Or give excuses. One thing I didn't like was they were trying to give an excuse to DJ Envy by saying that if somebody wasn't living right or not doing right, that God could still use them. Yeah, he used the donkey. We understand that for those of us who have been in church all our lives and taught everything up and down and, and back and forwards to only become older and have to relearn the truth because a lot of things we were taught. We're really just what people wanted us to do for their church. So for people like me, I have to be retaught what the word of God wants. Even in that, that's not knocking anything. It's just a learning experience because I have had the opportunity to be in church long enough to have the experience and know the ups and downs. But for someone who is in church at home, which to me is the word of God, the word of God and have a sense of knowing that if someone is not doing right, I don't want to, I don't, I can't really be fair to them. Shouldn't have been judged so harshly. He even had to use the DJ Envy even had to use the excuse of if somebody's out here selling drugs to kids and killing them, I don't want them coming to me trying to tell me what the Lord's trying to say. And that is the truth. That is the truth. But it was trying to be made as if. I'm out here stealing, but the Lord gave me a word. I can come and preach and teach to you. And he was, DJ Envy was like, nah. And Ty Tribbett was like trying to justify that. And I just I felt like he agreed with Charlemagne way too much. And I said that was the last thing, but this is the last thing. I did like how Jess stood on her Christian values. And I know the judgment is she ain't a Christian because she got a child with a lot. That's the judgment. But at the end of the day, she stood on her Christian values. When the question was asked about um, Pastor Murphy doing his swag surfing, and not just swag surfing, but the explicit music and turning his church into a club. I spoke about it too. Ty Tribute at first, he was like, he didn't want to talk about it, which I can understand if he didn't, because that probably his buddy is his friend. And if he had already talked to him and confident. I'm not going to lie or make up a story. I think personally, he didn't want to talk about it because if you are a man or gospel artist who continuously use R&B songs in your songs and you jump around on stage, there's going to be a chance that you're going to be look like, looked at that way also. So I think he didn't want to speak too much on it because he don't want the judgment passed on him. But I feel like Christians, we need to just focus on the word of God and get it for ourselves. The reason why we are so disappointed, I may have said this before and, I, and I'm through with that tie tribute thing, 
the reason why we are so disappointed when we have people like Taj Ribbit and, and all these pastors and stuff that fall from grace in front of our eyes because we took our eyes off the real prize and that was Jesus if we stay there until Jesus said move and didn't move that's our fault and I said that in a previous podcast years ago we are so entangled with the men of the when I say men I mean women too and uh, with their titles and their leadership and how good a word they could share and their prophecies and being enticed by the things that they're saying that if we're not careful we're all ease just passing it on to the fruit to Adam and cursing ourselves continuously we have to find a way to have an understanding that no matter who the Lord put before you no matter how good they are how wholesome they never had a scandal never will I don't care how nice and kind and how they gave to the community and they're always there for the church and this is truly a man and a woman of God you still can't take your eyes off the prize and the prize is Jesus Christ the prize is going to heaven so doing everything you need to do for him under his leadership and command to do that so that's my point on that I've been saying that for years and I won't stop saying it because I really truly believe that people are too entangled into the thoughts of how I should be in Christ and not who I am in Christ and I'm not the one to be out here saying that if you got that celebrity status, then, you know, you're not doing a Christ. I don't know your life. I know God can, um, gives us discernment and to be wise. But at the end of the day, I believe everybody is positioned in a place that God is placing them to be used to help somebody. And it may not be in my position where I'm at. If if I'm this person who is in the corporate corporate world, my position may be a light to someone in the corporate world. If someone is in the, what we say, Holly weird world, I just don't feel like everybody who is placed in the Hollywood world is just there. I think if God puts you there, he uses you as a representation of him. The problem is when the representation ends up being neglected because of what you see and want or make excuses for it. And the thing that I'm talking about now, skipping to another type of everything, is that I'm tired that everything that we do has to be a reflection of the things that are not of Christ because we want to, as Christians, accept the things to be... When I say things, I mean to... Accept the things that God wants us to do and not always try to downplay it because in our spirit, we think it's not really all that. It's not really all that bad. If the Lord said to keep a spiritual song in your heart and all you do is listen to R&B music because it's really not that bad, it don't really affect me, then when are you keeping the spiritual song in your heart? So it's things like that. It's things that come across that seem very, very minor. It's not hurting anybody. It's not hurting me. I can still walk with Christ and, and still see the fullness of him and understand him and still watch this and listen to this. That's old school. Nobody has to do that anymore. We evolve. God's grace and mercy, et cetera, et cetera, and blah, 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 blah. So I'm saying is once you start accepting a little bit and then say it's okay and then you see others do it because you do it then you say it's okay then after a while somebody's going to take it too far and you're going to feel like it's okay because you're going to want to take it too far too and as Christians we can't take it too far we got to take it to Christ and we got to be a full representation of him that's only fair to you being an ambassador of Christ because you know being on this earth we are the example of who he is not who we supposed to be to him but who he is he left us instructions and apparently we are not all following and those who are following sometimes are too aggressive in trying to correct the issue and i'm not saying i'm definitely not the one who baby who sugarcoats or try to baby buy anything i know that's probably not a word but i don't try to make um something out of nothing i feel like the word of god is the word of god and i'm not saying that it should be sugar-coated at all because i don't believe that at all but i do believe that in everything that we're doing for christ it has to be a representation of him from the word of god and even though it may come across as you being mild-mannered 
some things need to be mild-mannered and then sometimes some things need to be aggressive but we got to learn how to speak to each other and we got to learn how to draw people it seemed like the only time christians are really being heard is when it's very very negative i pray there is a time in this life that i'm living and i pray it's not ending no time soon <laughs> that um more of the good things of the church is coming out than the bad things and i'm gonna put a petition and i'm gonna ask the lord if i could do something on my podcast and website and uh, facebook when i get it back up and running um i'm gonna ask him if i could do something to try to make church a little more positive without the enticing of words and just because it's, your church does a praise break every week uh, no i really want the word of god to shine through people who really want the lord to shine first and i hope i'm being that person too so i want to thank you for listening thank you for listening to my podcast first podcast of march if you're listening to me on spotify amazon or anchor.fm podcast thank you and i hope you listen to all my previous podcasts and if you're looking at me and listening on youtube.com please subscribe and thank you for listening thank you this is minister nisi real talk ministry god bless I hope you enjoy today's episode. Please feel free to share and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you can receive notifications when a new episode is posted. You can also stop by Minister Nisi's website at www.rtmmbyn.com. There you can purchase her books, leave a comment, and stay connected with this ministry. Until next time, God bless.